options and efforts to test them in the private sector. This second hearing focuses on more incremental private sector driven approaches to reforming payments. We will hear shortly from private payers, a physician organization and a practicing physician who are engaged in efforts that reward physicians who provide high quality and efficient care to patients. Dr. Bender is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Chairman Herger and distinguished members of the Subcommittee on Health. I'm Dr. John Bender. I'm a family physician in Fort Collins, Colorado, and I'm CEO of Miramont Family Medicine, which is a network of patient centered medical homes. Now, in 2002, my wife, Teresa, and I moved back to Larimer County, where we're from, and we purchased one of the oldest practices in Fort Collins, Colorado. They'd been there for over 40 years, and were basically doing things the same as they had in the 1970s. They left me one computer and one employee. That was 10 years ago. Today, we have over 50 employees, 14 providers, including eight physicians. We have over 80 computers in a centralized data center serving four different uh, uh, parts of our state, and we have uh, uh, about 27,000 patients. Now, during the same period of time in Lemmer County, 34 primary care physicians uh, closed their doors or stopped providing primary care services. Eight of these were actual bankruptcies. And yet at the same time, we saw a doubling in the number of emergency room beds and an increase by the number of emergency room physicians by 50%, suggesting that if patients didn't have a patient-centered medical home like myself, they were going to the emergency room at a later stage of their illness for a higher cost, increasing health care premiums for everyone across the state. Now, how is it that Miramont was able to double in size, grow at 34% per year to the size that we achieved in this economy while other family physicians were saying, I give up and walking away? Well, part of it was in 2007, we made the conscious decision that we were no longer going to just focus on volume. We were going to make sure that we had a high quality product that was safe and efficient. And we believed that if we built the best product in the marketplace, the consumers would vote with their feet and we would be able to maintain our solvency. Because after all, I didn't want to be the 35th practice to close or the ninth physician to bankrupt. And so we pursued NCQA, Patient Centered Medical Home Recognition. That's the National Committee of Quality Assurance. We achieved level three, which is the highest level of patient centered medical home. It basically meant that we, after a six month audit period, were able to show improvements in our workflow and the way we retooled things so that we could deliver team approached care. We also had, uh, for example, a patient portal where patients could go online, look up their labs, see their uh, clinic record. They could send me a HIPAA compliant email or they could uh, schedule appointments. And we also we also uh, conducted uh, care coordination through the transitions of care as people went from hospitals to nursing homes, etc. Our next big break came in 2008 with the multi-payer uh, patient-centered medical home pilot. This was the brainchild of Dr. Paul Grundy and others at IBM who uh, had compelled the top payers in the United States, WellPoint, United Health Group, Cigna, Aetna, and Humana, to test the patient-centered medical home model. Uh, it was based on some of the beliefs uh, that, and work that uh, Dr. Barbara Starfield had published 10 years earlier, uh, suggesting that if we put an emphasis and primary care, we could bend the health uh, cost curve. And so uh, 17 pilots were selected. Miramont was one of them. It was convened under a group called the uh, Health Team Works, and it was basically an alliance of payers, uh, including insurers, employers, and physicians. We agreed on the quality metrics that we were going to uh, track to show improvement on, and we also agreed on a three-tiered payment system based on fee-for-service, per-member-per-month fees, and pay-for-performance. Now, fee-for-service was included, and I'll tell you why. There was an understanding that volumes in primary care were actually too low, and if we were going to pull people out of emergency room and urgent care and other high-cost centers, we would have to incentivize primary care physicians in order to help them to build the capacity to see the increased volumes. Per-member-per-month fees ensured that I was able to provide what was otherwise non-revenue-generating activities, such as having a diabetic nurse educator in-house or a psychologist uh, and, and doing care coordination. And then finally, uh, pay for performance bonuses made certain that we just didn't report our metrics to a centralized data registry, but we were actually working to try to reach certain target goals to help uh, improve our delivery of evidence-based medicine. The results are in, and they're fabulous. United Health Group has told uh, us that Miramont reduced hospital readmission rates by 83% compared with our peers. A year ago, the state Medicaid program joined the pilot, and they said that we have an ER utilization rate that is a negative 219%, negative 219% compared with our peers. And so I call on the uh, uh, subcommittee on health of the uh, Ways and um, Means Committee of the uh, House of Representatives 
to compel the Department of Health and Human Services to immediately deploy the patient-centered medical home payment standard uh, nationally in order to conserve the strength of the primary care workforce, in order to increase the quality of health care delivered to entitlement benefit uh, uh, or beneficiaries, and to also uh, reverse the escalating costs uh, that are burdening the American taxpayer by using a payment method, a payment standard that has been proven and is now being adopted uh, in the private sector. Thank you. Thank you.